In the circuit of figure 3 below, this one, a sinusoidal source on the left is connected to a factory represented by this box on the right by a feeder, which is a cable represented by its resistance and its inductive reactance. The voltage at the source reads 140 volts. Let me write it down. The voltmeter at the factory reads 115 Watch. These are RMS, of course. A water-damaged and partially destroyed tag for the feeder reads X is 5R, but the value of R is erased beyond recognition. That is, we do not know the value of this resistance, but we know that this reactance is five times that value, whatever that value is. An ammeter at the factory reads 33 amps. Oh, so we know that this current is 33 amps. A watt meter at the source reads 3 kilowatts. Well, we know that the power here is 3 kilowatts, the power delivered by this source. The question is, what is the power factor and the load at the factory, including if that power factor is inductive or if it's capacitive and also what is the active power and the reactive power at the factory and then what percentage of the active power delivered by the source those three kilowatts is lost as feeder heat losses losses here we shall see I draw the phasor diagram where I write down the phasors I know. 115 volts, the voltage on the factory. 140 volts, the voltage and the source and the current of 33 amps. You say, wait a minute, are you assuming the load is inductive? Well, that is a reasonable assumption. After all, the voltage drop from 140 to 115 is so significant that most likely the load is inductive. All right. What is what we need to find here? We need to find the power factor and the factory and the load. We need to find the angle between this voltage and this current and then take its cosine. What we need is to find this angle. Let me extend this a little bit. This angle is the angle I need to find the power factor angle at the factory. Hmm, how do we find that? Well, I don't know. Let's see what we know. And the source, we know the voltage. We know the power. We know the current, which is also 33 amps. Hey, we know the power factor here, don't we? Remember that the power and the source, PS, is a voltage at the source, which is 140, times current at the source, which is 33 amps, times the power factor at the source. We know this is 3000 watts, this is 140, and this is 33. We can find this angle. Let's find that angle. Let's say theta S is the arcosine of 3000 divided by 140 that multiplies 33 that's 49 50 1 degrees what angle is that this angle this one between the voltage here at the source and the current which is coming in the circuit this is the angle theta is which we know it's 49.5 degrees Holy. But what we need is theta if that's right. And this is the one we know that's correct. If only we knew this angle. Yes. What angle is that? Little delta. That is a torque angle. How am I going to find that? Well, we remember those two voltages and that angle are part of a triangle. This triangle. Hmm. If we solve that triangle, we find delta, and then we can, yes. How do we find a triangle? If we know any three elements of the triangle, but not the three angles, we can solve the triangle. Let's see what we know. We know 115 and 140, two sides. 
Hmm, we need delta, that's right. Can we find perhaps his angle? Hmm, what angle is that? That is alpha, right. How? Well, there is a little triangle here, the cable triangle. Let's draw it like so. Hmm, we can find what angle is this one. Absolutely. And that is phi. That is the cable angle. What angle is that? All that is the r tangent of who? x over r. But we don't know r. Do we care? x over r is 5. That's right. We know that angle. 78, 64 degrees. That's right. This is this angle. To find alpha, we only have to subtract 5 minus this angle here. What angle is that? This one. Theta f. Oh, no. But that is the one we're trying to find. So, bummer. We cannot find alpha. We're left with only one. What about if we find this side of the triangle? This side is the voltage in the cable. Well, but for that we need the current, which we have, and we need the impedance of the cable that we don't. Bummer. So much for that. What about if we compute this angle here, the angle that we called beta? Can we? Oh, yes, we can. We draw this line that is parallel to the current. Let's specify that it's parallel to this one. Why? Because this angle here is known. Is it? Yes. This angle is this angle. The perfect angle of the source. We know that. We know that. That is 49.51 degrees. Mm. And this one, this little one here, that is just 90 minus phi. And phi, we know what it is. 11.31 degrees. And then what? Well, check it out. This angle here is 90 degrees. It's a right angle. Is that right? Yeah, because this side is perpendicular to the current. Ah, that's why this is 90. So beta is 90 minus theta s minus 1131. That is right. Let's write it. Beta is... 90 degrees minus theta s minus 1131. That 29.18 degrees. Bingo. Now we have three elements in our triangle. 115 volts on this side, 140 on this side, and this angle which is 29.18. We can solve the triangle. We can use sine law several times until we find delta. That is what I'm about to do. Delta turn out to be 723 degrees. And we can subtract from theta f s, sorry, from theta s, 4951 minus 7. 23 and obtain what is almost our answer 42 28 degrees the cosine of that is the power factor at the factory cosine of 42 28 which is 0 0.74 inductive or lagging, depending on how you prefer to call that. And what else? Well, the power at the factory is voltage at the factory, which is 115, times the current at the factory, which is 33 amps, times that power factor, cosine of theta f, which is 0.74. You multiply all of that, and you get 2.8 kilowatts. Actually, if you want to be picky, is 2,808 watts, if you want more digits, of course. And Q, the reactive power absorbed by the load, is 115.33 amps. And the sign of that angle that we just found. And that is 
53 bars. That is approximately 2.55 kilobars. And the efficiency? Well, let's see what the losses are. What the losses are. Hmm. The power input by the source is 3,000 watts, but the power absorbed by the load on this side is less than that, is 2,808. So that means that the losses are 3,000 minus 2,808, and that is 192 watts. In percentage, with respect to the 3,000, we're taking that from, that is divided 3,000 times 100%, that is 6.4. Percent, and that is the answer to this question. Thank you very much.